Gamma Cast Episode 4. Episode 4 gave us a closer look into the lives of existing characters as well as introduced new ones. A few new players who have been watching chose to hop in in action for a bit, and I look forward to seeing more of their interesting characters and ideas. I'll go through and summarize every character's scene swiftly, hitting on key points. I will then discuss the meta of why things happened the way they did, as well as some player rewards and a few interesting notes. Feel free to jump to your character's part, but I discourage it. Just like the episodes, another player's scene could intertwine with your story arc, and you will not want to miss that information, especially when I discuss the meta of it. Let's begin. Marid Z. We learn why Marid is well respected in Haven. She demonstrates and puts pressure on her enemies with powerful presence, resolve, and conviction. She punishes a wealthy financial supporter of hate groups using reality manipulation. It is then confirmed that those infected with gamma radiation can most definitely cause mass mutation in those nearby, and this is extremely dangerous. Marid Z loses friends and supporters to this mass mutation that occurs during her event. Now onto the meta. The player explained that during Marid's downtime phase, they want her to shed light on mutant bias and displacement, and suggested having her genie knocking the power out of the homes in that neighborhood. The difficulty rank of the task that she was attempting was low, because it's light work for Marid Z with her three skills, weapon and explosives expert, reality manipulation, and street credibility to deliver a powerful message. You were successful. Rewards are as follows. You bolstered the pro-infected supporters and are closer to winning the Civil War. Expect more supporters to join your group soon. However, you also discouraged many of the enemy and retaliation is expected. Moving on to Sean McNamara, a new character debut yet still shrouded in mystery. We learn that Sean McNamara is a private investigator tasked with a case involving Maria Z. We learn he is fearless and wise when Sean goes toe-to-toe -to -toe lawfully and diplomatically with Myrad Z, resulting in a stalemate. Sean gets a lead from his encounter with Myrad and goes to investigate a boy who was found dead the next morning. Sean believes Myrad Z is a prime suspect. Now onto the meta. Sean is a local PI who recently started taking jobs. The player gave me a few interesting details about Sean and here's one. He owns five different vehicles. One is registered to himself, two to his detective agency, and two to a holding company registered in Delaware. The player chose to spend their downtime phase showing their character during their daily workday. I saw this as a great opportunity to tie his arc into Myers. The unexpected civilian deaths during her protest was specifically created to bring Sean into her story arc. The difficulty of his task was low, as this too was a day in the life of Sean McNamara, therefore easy. Rewards are as follows. Sean McNamara, you gain respect from Haven's law enforcement for facing Marge Z without pissing yourself. You also gain a new plot point by way of offering to investigate Marge Z for the death of that boy. The father is your client. Moving on. Deftude and Six. Both new characters and debuting together. We learn that Deftude is the chief scientist and one of five leaders of Bloodvein's science branch, as well as older sibling of the Emperor, Bai Wang. We learn he has a gamma gift of being able to supernaturally learn the way things work and reapply it. He has secretly been recruiting and experimenting on the gamma youth and has received permission from Bai Wang and funding to opening an academy for the Gamma Gifted. Now onto the meta. Deftude is an NPC I created to coexist with the players and is held to most of the same rules. These types of characters will allow me to engage the players in different ways. Players' interactions with these major NPCs will be highly impactful and beneficial to them. Allying with or defeating one of these NPCs could provide epic perks, and killing them as with any player, comes with a reward. Deftude was successful in displaying his work in getting the Emperor's buy-in to fund an academy and recruit. Deftude's star pupil has also become more proficient and confident. Six, 
Along with Deftude, Six is also an NPC. We learn he is a relative and is a blood vein. He has the ability to spot, capture, and command dimensional entities called personas using mystical sealing and summoning arts, amplified by his third eye that's mutated by Gamma. Six captures the persona of Bai Wang, adding it to his collection of scrolls that he keeps them sealed in. Unto the meta. Six is building a collection from scratch as he literally was just taught how to do this the day prior. His first and only card was called Mind Mass, a telepathic amorphous elemental being. I wrote everything I needed to determine what the persona would be for the new creature that he caught. For example, I wrote that the creature's ability is a defense against an attack that is something less common. To determine what kind of attack, I rolled the keywords communicate and peace, which I interpreted as a defense against mind control or influence from anything other than Six's control. Six's goal in his downtime phase was to train and capture Bai Wong's persona as plotted with Death Tube prior to the meeting. The difficulty was minuscule because it was under the teaching and tutelage of Death Tube, making it easy to understand for Six. Rewards are as followed. Six's display of power made his master, Deftude, proud. Six became more proficient in his talents and captured Bai Wong's persona. The persona is called Consumed Demon, an average humanoid, sword and shield wielding demon consumed by anger and fury. Moving on. Anarchy 12. We learn Anarchy is up to something sinister as we can see and hear him building. We learn Ajin Ra and Omega have been captured by him and are barely being kept alive. We learn the fate of Goldbrand as Anarchy has him delivered to the Tuxedo Men near death. Now into the meta. The player chose to spend their downtime building something not to be fully revealed. The difficulty rank was below average as they were experimenting with new things but with familiar concepts, and so they were successful. The heart shown between Ajin and Omega was only meant to show something being created and is the result of me filling in a gap of detail. I was told to hint at something so under wraps I barely knew the details about it myself, but am looking forward to seeing it when it's revealed. There was a part of the scene where we see the tuxedo men hanging upside down when they answer the phone. This is because they're weird and that's how they sleep. They're very odd and won't be looked into further until a player happens to come across or explore them further. Rewards are as follows. Anarchy befriends the Tuxedo Men. Anarchy was successful at building what he was building. Whatever that may be. Moving on. Makai. We are then introduced to a new character named Makai. We learn that he is a rich and powerful heir to the Roaring Dragon Clan from Dorinthia and rival of Bloodvane Dynasty. One of their founders disbanded half of their dynasty and brought them overseas to wage war on Bloodvane in the city of Haven for their betrayal. Makai purchases an engineering facility, he purchases the tallest luxury condo in Haven, and he successfully launches an attack on Bloodvane's shipment. Makai crosses paths with the weakened Ajin Ra and decides to take him in. Now onto the meta. The Roaring Dragons are just as if not more powerful than Bloodvane. Interesting fact, Makai is half Dorinthian, which is our game's version of Japanese people. The player chose to use his downtime phase to get stationed, begin mobilization, and announce their presence to Bloodvane in Haven. The difficulty of these tasks combined was above average, but he was successful. The player of Makai and Ajin mutually agreed to intertwine their arcs so that their characters can cross each other. I encourage teamwork like this, so if your character is open to joining forces, let me know. Until then, I'll continue to direct as normal. Rewards are as follows. Makai used his effect skill, Wealth to put him in a powerful and strategic position against his enemies as well as his admirers. With a little force and influence, 
Makai was able to secure the tallest and most luxurious condo in Haven Square. You also have Bloodvane's attention. Moving on. Ajin Ra. We learn Ajin Ra was captured during the events, or after the events of the last episode of the auction. Ajin was experimented on with Omega and left for dead. Omega is nowhere to be found. Ajin's powers are still nullified. We see Ajin experience a flashback that reminds him of a key to self-awareness taught by his elders. He discovers a message left by Anarchy taunting Ajin and solely bearing no messages other than Anarchy's symbol. Ajin Ra spends his time in the safe harbor recovering his strength back. Now into the meta. The player wished to spend his downtime phase recovering from the last episode after the auction. The player specifically placed the flashback in this scene to begin to shine light on Ajin Ra's story. The scene with the creepy dude in Ajin Ra's sock was created by the player and was originally intended to be between Ajin and Makai, but I told the player that Makai is too cool and there's no way that the player would agree to some creepy shit like that. I thought it was hilarious though, uh, in an interaction I would like people to see, and told him that I'd fit it in there somehow. So that's why I added an NPC to take that role instead. Rewards are as follows. Ajin gains his strength back, going from below average back to base mutant rank of average. Remember, downtime phases are meant to recover lost ranks as well, so set obtainable goals for your character so that they can be successful. Due to the defeat condition set by Anarchy from the last episode, you will still suffer a temporary minus one rank shift for one more round, due to your abilities recovering from the nullification. Moving on. Tempest. Tempest's new fame allowed him to upgrade to a new luxurious condo in Haven Square from his one bedroom apartment. In preparation for a fundraiser to erect a center for gamma infected youth, Tempest gains massive support from Smaven CEO. Tempest builds defenses by way of creating a deadly effective temporal anomaly. Tempest is introduced to R-Type X and hires him as a guard and recruits him to oversee the Gamma Youth mutant development. Now onto the meta. The player chose to upgrade his home, build his defenses, and begin to prepare for a fundraiser for the opening of his center. The difficulty was average and they were successful. Both Tempest and Makai were both in pursuit of a luxurious condo on the same phase so it only felt right to link them together in that regard. I took into consideration of Tempest's fame, but due to Makai's wealth and faction, a scary faction at that, the Roaring Dragons were able to strong arm the purchase, securing the tallest condo in Haven for Makai. Tempest is opening a center for mutants. This in turn gives new players a new place to start should they decide to hop into the game. The player of Tempest informed me he was open to players allying with him to help oversee the center since he will be busy with other business. However, those interested would be subject to an empathic interview with him where any bad intentions would be identified immediately. Rewards are as follows. Tempest gains immense support even before the fundraiser along with many Smaven perks courtesy of the Smaven CEO. He writes... <laughs> He writes Tempest a note telling him that his heroics reminded him of his sister, which inspired the restaurant's name. You successfully secured yourself with new temporal security powers as well. Moving on. R-Type X. We learn R-Type X, aka Real Sengoku, is in pursuit of his true potential and power. He allies himself with Tempest on a journey of self-development and leading others to self-development. He is hired to guard Tempest during the fundraiser. R-Type X also finds time to train and stay sharp on his skills. Now into the meta. The player's goal was to train and find a means to learning about his true power. To jumpstart his ideas and get his creativity flowing, the player requested that I give him a lead 
for their downtime phase. So I took every story arc into consideration and recalled that Tempest was open to help. And so I shared that with R-Type X, to which he obliged to assist Tempest. This is how their story got connected. Rewards are as follows. R-Type X, you gain a plus one rank shift to your next phase due to you training and staying sharp on your abilities. Moving on. Advocate. We are introduced to Advocate, a mysterious new character or characters. What little we learn is that this character is Minnie and goes by one name. We learn Advocate is extremely captivating and influential and uses this to obtain positions of power on all levels of Haven. Now into the meta. The player's goal was to assimilate and get well situated in Haven's social infrastructure. The difficulty for this was low because Advocate has the power of overwhelming influence. The ability to possess overtly and covertly great influence by in political, criminal, economic, royal, scientific, etc. means, etc. means, which grants them control over the sphere and its workings. Because of this, getting assimilated was easy for Advocate. Side note, Governor Gabucci is a single man. Moving on. Blah Himmel. Blah Himmel. <laughs> a new character. We learn Blah Himmel is a gamma infected veterinarian with the power of ecokinesis as ecokinesis and is an empath. We learn she is a gifted surgeon and has a soft spot for animals. Blau stumbles upon a mutated kitten, which leads her to discovering a way to trigger rapid growth in plant life. Now onto the meta. The player submitted a particular scene and series of events that they wanted displayed involving discovering a new way to bring more plant life to Haven, all while showing this type of person that Blau is. Blau Himmel is German. Blau originally wanted two McGriddles, but thanks to our community, we created our own McDonald's named the Sandwich Maven's Haven, aka Smavens, now officially part of the lore. That concludes the Gamma Cast for Episode 4. Stay tuned for Episode 5.